Let's talk about inverse proportion. Now, last time we talked about direct proportion and we talked about when one value goes up, its corresponding value goes up. Today we're talking about inverse proportion and you can kind of think about it as the opposite of the last lesson, which means as one value goes up, the other value goes down. Or as one goes down, the other goes up. The uh, more money I give away, the less money I have in my wallet. It's a sad truth of life. But anyway, so let's take a look at this example. So here we have a cross-sectional and depth of water. You might wonder what that refers to, but let's say we have a flask filled with some liquid. And the wider the, the flask, what you'll notice is that the depth of the water would be lower, right? Common sense there. Let's make it, make it look a little... So if I have a certain amount of water in here, if it's a thinner flask, it'll look more full in terms of the depth of the water than if it's something wider that has a greater cross-section, so it's like shorter and fatter, then it won't look as deep. So that is what's being represented in this table over here. Now, as far as inverse proportion goes, what you need to do is find some commonalities between the two values. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to make a third column here, and I'm going to call it xy, so it's x times y. And what you'll notice is that when you multiply x times y for each of these values, you get 360. It's true. Now this is different if you think about back to direct proportion because now in order to get our constant k we're getting it by multiplying x times y. Think about how this is different from inverse from a direct proportion, sorry. So this is this is how we find our constant through inverse and how we find it through direct is a little different. I'm going to ask you to think back and remember, or you might see it up here on the screen shortly. So we've noticed we've created a constant, and now let's get to our definition. So when two quantities x and y vary in such a way that ky is a constant, they are said to be in inverse proportion, or y is said to be inversely proportionate or proportional to x. So when two quantities x and y are in inverse proportion, x times y equals k, k can equal zero, and there's a reason we'll get into that later. And the graph of y against x is a hyperbola. What does that mean? All right, well here's our graph. Here's our x value, here's our y. Now as we go back to the data, You'll notice 36, y is 36, x is 10, y is 18, x is 20. So as y goes down, the x values go up. So x is going up, y is decreasing in value. So the graph actually ends up looking something like this. This is called a hyperbola. this part of the graph right here. And the hyperbola is that curve, which is actually part of a greater curve, um, depending on the kind of data that we'll be studying later. But for our intents, this is a hyperbola. It's just a section of a graph. It's a cool word. So now let's talk about when to something else um, in terms of inverse proportion. When two quantities are in inverse proportion, x1 times y1, oh, let's do that again. Big eraser for big mistakes. All right, here we go. x1 sub 1 times y sub 1 is going to equal x sub 2 times y times, times y sub 2. So just to show, illustrate what that means, that means that 36 times 10 is going to equal 20 times 18. Or, 20 times 18 times 
is going to equal 30 times 12, so on and so forth. You'll notice they're all equaling the same value because they're all finding they all have that same constant of x times y to get you k. So that's cool to know because you might run into some practice problems like the one you see down here. The time taken, t hours, to do a paint job is inversely proportional to the number of workers n. Given that nine workers take 20 hours to complete a job, find the time taken by six workers to do the same job. So here's where you can go ahead and try it out on your own, or watch me walk through the example right now. So we know that t hours, so t sub 1 times n sub 1 is going to equal t sub 2 n sub 2. So we know that it takes 9 workers 20 hours to complete a job. So in our first proportion, we have 9 times 20. Find the time taken by 6 workers to do the same job. So n sub 2. Or you can just label it as n if you like. So I have 9 times 20 is 180, and that equals 6n. I want to get n, n sub 2. Div by itself, I want to isolate my variable, so I'm dividing both sides by 6. 180 divided by 6 equals 30. So I see that the time taken by six workers to complete the job would be 30 hours. That's my answer. So that's one way we can use inverse proportion to solve, to solve a problem. There's another way too, and we'll talk about that later, some other time.